Hey guys, in this video we're going to make our first C Sharp application. All we're going to do is send a message to the user. Let's see how to do that. Press the start button and open up Visual Studio. When it opens up, click on create a new project. And we want to open up a uh, console application for .NET Framework. So at the top where it says search, type in console and click on the one that says console app .NET Framework. You might have to scroll through here if you don't see it. Make sure you also get the one that's for C Sharp. You'll see it right there where it says C Sharp. Double click on it, give it a name. Let's do first C Sharp. Select a destination and click create. So this is what your first project looks like. On the right is the Solution Explorer and the Properties tab. If you don't see these, you can open them up by clicking View at the top of Visual Studio, and then you can see Properties at the bottom and Solution Explorer at the top. They're useful because you can get information about each of the items in your project. You can also browse through the items in your project, view them, edit them, and etc. from the Solution Explorer. Like I said at the beginning of this video, we're only going to do a simple program today where we output a message to the user. Throughout this tutorial series though, I'll make sure to explain all of this stuff to you guys so by the end of it you have a thorough understanding of C Sharp. Alright, so go ahead and push enter here so we get another line. And this is where we're going to be typing our code. Let's write the code first and then I'll explain what it means after. So in between these brackets here type console dot write line put the parentheses put those double quotes and do hello world which is the traditional thing that programmers do. If you notice there's a squiggly line at the end that means there's an error and if you hover over it you'll see some suggestions from Visual Studio. Right now it's saying we uh, forgot a semicolon. In C sharp almost every line ends in a semicolon so make sure you put that and you'll see that the error is gone. After that, press enter and type console.readline. Press tab, do the uh, parentheses, and put a semicolon. Now your code should look just like mine. Let's see what it looks like. To run it, press F5 on your keyboard or press the start button at the top. And this is our application. You can see it says, hello world. Let's try changing this to say something else. So I'm gonna have it say, hi YouTube. I'm gonna press F5 to run it and you can see it changed the message to hi YouTube. So this line here is the message that gets sent right here. Well, what does this line here do? This console.read line. Well, let's get rid of it to see what it does. So I got rid of the line, I'm gonna press F5 and my program closed. It ran for a fraction of a second and then closed. The reason why that happened is programs execute one step at a time. When they finish their last step, they're done executing because there's nothing else to do. So they close. And that's what happened here. When we use console.readline, we're telling the program to wait for the user's input. We're telling it to wait and read the line to see if anything gets added by the user. So basically it lets you type stuff. And the reason why this stops the program from exiting is because it's waiting for you to type stuff. It's still executing, it's still running. Now to go into a little more depth for starters, if this window looks familiar, it's because it's just like Windows Command Prompt, which you might have seen before. In C Sharp, this is called the console, which is just one type of application. It's one way to program stuff. The program that we created was a console application, meaning this kind of application that has this box here, this window. It's a console window because we have a console application. That's also why we're doing console.writeline. We're saying console this thing here, write a line, and then we say, this is what I want you to write, hi YouTube. And that's exactly what it did. It wrote this stuff into the console. Then we got console.readline. So we're saying console, read the line. See what comes in. See the term read implies that there's some information that can be inputted. For example, when you read a book, the words in the book are information being inputted into you. So again, console.writeline is write a line to this console thing here, which is what our project is. Whatever's in between the parentheses is what we want to write to that line. And then console.readline is saying, hey, I want you to read a, uh, read a line from this console here, whatever the user input is. All right, now it's your turn. Using what we've learned so far, I want you to make a program that can do this. It'll output, hi YouTube, then it'll say, Tom's tutorials are the best. Then it'll say, one, two, three, four, five. And finally, programming is so fun. Go ahead and pause the video now and try to do it yourself. In just a couple seconds, I'm gonna show you the solution.
All right, so you're ready for the solution. Let's see how it's done. It's pretty simple. All I did was I did console.writeline. Tom's tutorials are the best. Console.writeline, one, two, three, four, five, and one more, console.writeline. If you were having trouble and your program kept on closing instantly, it's because you gotta remember to have console.readline at the bottom. You don't need to have it after each line. So you don't need something like this. Again, for our purposes right now, the only reason we had one console.writeline at the bottom was to stop the program from closing instantly. But we don't need it after each line, because remember, each console.readline is gonna wait and read the line. It's gonna wait for user input. So we only need that when we need that. And in our case now, it's we needed to stop it from closing instantly. All right, guys, that is the video. In the next one, we are gonna learn how to use console.readline to accept some input from the user and then display it back to them using console.writeline. I'll see you guys there.